Hey everyone, I'm George, Advanced Cicerone and National Ranked BJCP Judge. Today I am here to compare two classic examples from the BJCP category of Flanders Red. This video is for you if you want to get to know these flavor profiles, witness the typical BJCP judge tasting format, and or taste along with somebody uh, if you're studying for any of the BJCP or Cicerone exams. Also, the videos are for me to do the same and revisit some of these classic styles and uh, keep myself sharp, which is the point. So uh, if you would like to see any particular videos or if you'd like to see me compare certain beers or compare in between styles, which is the plan, um, let me know, leave a comment, like, subscribe, do all that stuff, and I'll just keep doing these. So today we're going to taste Duchess de Ragon, a classic Flanders Red, and Rodenbach Grand Cru. Both of these you'll find uh, on the list for the classic examples for 23B uh, from the BJCP category for Flanders Red. And um, the difference uh, between the Rodebach Grand Cru and the Rodebach Classic is that the Grand Cru has a slightly higher proportion of, uh, of the older, like two-year um, two uh, blend going into it, whereas the Classic has a slightly um, lower ratio or percentage of that going into it. Uh, but, they're, but both of those Rodenbachs are listed in, in the Classic there. So um, these two are the ones that kind of come up for people when they're thinking about this category in specific, you know, if, if someone's going to say like, you know, what's a Flanders Red, which one should I go get? They're probably going to mention one of these two, um, yet they're distinct from each other. And sometimes tasting between uh, the same, you know, two examples that are on the list for the classics uh, is a good way to kind of see some of the, the range and depth for that style. And uh, here, you know, to illustrate that even more, we're just doing two of them. So really, I, ideally, you would be doing kind of all, at some point, you get to try like all of the examples from every single category side by side. And in addition to that, you get to take uh, that even further by comparing a, a good classic from one, ex one example to, uh, or from one style with uh, another uh, good classic example from a different style. For instance, the Flanders Red and the Flanders Brown, uh, getting a couple beers from each of those categories would be really illustrative as far as um, you know what what the actual difference is between those beers because sometimes it's really subtle, um, but uh, if you if you dig into it, you'll get it. So I'm going to jump in, and the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to run through uh, the, the BJCP set, which would be appearance, aroma, flavor, mouthfeel, overall, and we're going to do that for both beers, but we're going to do kind of one BJCP set at a time. So We'll do appearance for both, aroma for both, flavor for both, uh, etc. And, and that way we can kind of compare directly back and forth. I like doing that when I'm going like through the beers. Another way to do it would be to do like one beer on its own and then another beer on its own and then kind of compare. But I think if you have, especially, um, you know, if we had three or four here, like going through aroma together would be good. Going through flavor would be good. Uh, you, you would want to kind of... Um, adjust your, keep, keep in mind that you're kind of moving your palate back and forth. And so there could be some extra fatigue there, you know, to kind of combat that, you know, sips of water in between are good. And then also um, as you're going from like this one to that one, uh, and then going back to this one, give yourself a couple of little like sips and sort of like rinses to allow that one to kind of, uh, or allow your palate to kind of go back to that. Now, I just want to note that between Flanders Red and Ode Bruin, there's a lot of overlap, and typically Belgian brewers don't really make a distinction between those two styles. It's not a made-up categorization, but it's something that when we, when we take all of the Flanders, whether they're called red or brown by the brewer, if we take all of those and we taste them side by side, we start to notice distinctions between them. And in this case, with the red, we tend to notice um, a little bit more of the acidity. If you look at the just statistical value for this style, 
the, the dryness tends to be, or the finishing gravity tends to be lower, which means the dryness uh, tends to be a bit more pronounced, which means the acidity might come through a little bit more, the maltiness might come through a little bit less compared to uh, what we end up categorizing as like Ode Bruin or, or uh, Brown Flanders kind of style of beers. So uh, another video down the road could very much so be a sort of classic brown versus classic uh, red, at least according to BJCP. Um, and yeah, so I'll move on from that. So here's our color side by side. Um, let's gonna see here. Try to put them both in the middle so you have an opportunity to kind of see the same lighting. Uh, the Rodenbach here has a touch more clarity, which is making it appear a bit more kind of red. Uh, and the Duchess has just a touch more kind of brown to it, but it's also a little bit more, you know, haze to it. So that haze might be kind of adding to the perception of, of that like darkness. But um, by any case, that's, that's true. And head color or foam color is pretty identical. And the formation of the head as far as mostly fine bubbles with a few, um, you know, medium size uh, or small bubbles uh, kind of in the mix. But both are demonstrating early signs of, of good lacing here and here. And so appearance is pretty, pretty spot on. Uh, I do see some on both some sort of uh, rising uh, sort of uh, bubbles coming up. And I can actually hear some of the like sort of gas kind of coming out as we go. So let's start with aroma. I'm going to start with the Duchess. This will be on my, uh, your right, my left. So Duchess here. The first impression I get on the aroma is a good balance between getting some of these malt characteristics, which I'll describe as uh, like bread crust or toast kind of a medium like toast as in like it's in the you have a piece of bread and it's in the toaster and it's not just slightly toasted it's kind of medium but it's definitely not burnt a low caramel a low nutty that's kind of like a a slightly like a toasted pecan and with that at about the same time i'm getting a medium plus um, yeast derived kind of like tangy like uh, and tangy I need to describe that a little bit better but um, so let me you know give me a second here I'll come up with some better descriptors for that so cherry definitely uh, like a dark sort of aged balsamic vinegar uh, peach pear apricot um, dates figs a lot of fruitiness and that fruitiness seems to be a good mix of malt derived character also some yeast derived character yeast and bacteria derived character and I can smell a touch of wood um, derived it smells almost like uh, vanillin but like this kind of generic sort of oak but I might describe that as wood or I'm sorry as vanilla with a touch of kind of like cinnamon or like um, mulling spices and a little touch of this um, sort of like fresh tobacco. So if you open up a pack of cigarettes, um, I don't smoke, but, uh, or if you, you know, people have like those pre-roll, you know, they buy the big pack of like raw tobacco or whatnot. If you smell that, um, you get that kind of sense. You can sort of train your nose to like, what is that fresh tobacco smell? I definitely don't encourage smoking. I hate the smell of smoke actually, but, um, unless it's a smoked lager, which we'll do some other time. Okay, so, and, and then my hop impression on this, none. Uh, as, as I'm kind of adjusting to this a little bit more, that um, sweet balsamic, or like, it's almost like a reduced balsamic in that way, because I have like the acetic acid, which comes across as, um, you know, like a little bit like nail polish remover, but like balsamic vinegar is really the, the main um, description, we, description we would wanna use here. And again, that like sweet cherry candy characteristic mingling nicely with uh, some malt characteristics that like toasty, slight caramel, slight nutty kind of right underneath it. Dinner roll also kind of coming up in there too. 
So I'm going to compare that to the Rodenbach. So a lot of similar characteristics, but what I'm noticing right off the right off the bat on the nose here is that the um, sort of like cherry, like the old school hard cherry candy is coming through a little bit more pronounced on this. Um, so my malt impressions in that medium territory, my yeast bacteria or like fermentation characteristics are in the medium plus. Hot perceptions, none. And then I want to look for diacetyl too on these. None. None. When I go back and forth between these, I notice that wood, oaky, um, like vanillin, sort of charred wood sort of characteristic come through a little bit on this. And when I say charred wood, I'm definitely not implying like roast or coffee or chocolate. You might say there's like a slight chocolatey or coffee sort of characteristic to the malt here. That's kind of like where the caramel and, and breadiness is just starting to touch into that category or territory, but not, not really. Uh, and if anything, that's just being sort of that perception is being enhanced by the presence of that oak aroma. So it'll be interesting to see how that oak aroma uh, plays on the flavor when we get to um, and in the mouthfeel when we think about like what, how oak can influence tannins and, or introduce tannins, that sort of thing, which will also be interesting because we'll be looking for how the, the phenols from the yeast uh, and that peppery sort of quality from the yeast can influence that as well. So, all right, so let's go to flavor. I'm giving it a good swish so that it has a chance to, you know, sort of dominate my palate. I can start thinking about like the sensations that are happening as far as the tannin ex expressions, um, the alcohol, the acidity, if there's like perceived bitterness, all that sort of stuff. And then I'm gonna give it another quick little swish. And then breathing out my nose so that I can really utilize my olfactory bulb, give it a chance to pick up as much of that aroma in there as possible. So for flavor, uh, the, the sort of dominant feature here is the yeast and bacteria characteristics, so the, the fermentation profile. And so I'm gonna start off by describing um, my, my yeast fermentation. So I'll say uh, fermentation, um, intensity or flavors from fermentation is medium plus and I would describe those with a lot of this a lot of things we picked up on the aroma so we have our uh, cherry I have some uh, sort of like uh, balsamic vinegar I have some kind of mild like acid so I'm getting this taste so acids medium um, and uh, getting a little bit of like peach and pear that I think I'll attribute to some of these fermentation characteristics. I get some some black pepper, which I could attribute to the oak, but I could attribute to the uh, fermentation characteristics as well. Uh, and then I'm going to put my malt at around medium minus. It's supportive. There's a little bit of uh, malt sweetness in this, so I could um, touch on that, just kind of like sugar. Um, but then the actual flavor of the, of the malt characteristics coming across more as honey, dinner roll, uh, fresh toast, uh, touch of caramel. I would say the caramel is very low just to kind of like clarify that I'm not talking about really caramel -y. I'm talking about like there's caramel here, but it's in that medium low and then nutty again in that like medium low. Um, and then for my bitterness, this is going to be tricky because we're going to talk about perceived bitterness. Perceived bitterness is medium minus, and I feel like most of that bitterness is coming from oak tannin and uh, polyphenols or like these peppery sort of elements that we can get from, from the, the yeast and the bacteria. And then also the acidity is kind of playing a role in sort of 
all of those things working together to kind of create this in, enhanced perception of, of bitterness. But hop-derived bitterness is low, and that is sort of enhanced again by this oak tannin and uh, yeast phenol and yeast acid or acid uh, derived from yeast fermentation. Um, and then it has this nice lingering kind of balsamic characteristic with a little touch of this like caramel and honey, kind of like um, uh, palm honey, or like if you just have ever taken, or if you've ever tasted honey that's been um, kind of reduced down, you get a lot of these nice, like almost smoky type flavors, but more like intense date and fig. And that has um, some nice touches of that. So uh, balance here is yeast, yeast slash fermentation um, characteristic leaning beer. And um, I think that'll kind of wrap up our BDSB flavor on that side. Let's go over here to the Rodenbach. Overall, the flavor intensity is lower than the Duchess. Uh, so right off the bat the thing i want to talk about here is this kind of like malt sweetness and that malt sweetness i think is less dynamic and complex than the duchess that malt sweetness i would describe as honey dinner roll um, slightly toasted bread and i kind of leave it there there's like a hint towards caramel uh, the way that you might get a hint of caramel through like a a cherry like lozenge or something like that or like the old school hard cherry candies um, but the malt intensity is definitely lower here lower here than it is here so i'm going to call this malt intensity low and the yeast derived or like fermentation derived characteristics i'm i'm going to call um i want to call them lower than this so i might have to sort of adjust my um my intensity vocabulary here which is a constant process but so yeast derived fermentation characteristics overall I'm gonna say low um, I should probably say medium low but that means I should move my yeast derived I think I said medium or medium plus on this one actually so I oh, yeah you can rewind it you'll see but I would call this medium low or medium plus and then maybe medium minus or low here so my fermentation characteristics, uh, medium minus, and uh, I would describe those as pear, apple, pineapple, uh, peach, and cherry. And that, ch that cherry is, again, coming from this acetic uh, vinegar-like characteristics, more balsamic, but a lower balsamic uh, vinegar characteristic than, than this one. Uh, in, the, in the world of beer, I would call this a... Um, low balsamic and I would call this like a medium plus balsamic um, or acetic acid if you if you need to kind of learn those those terms as well um, so malt low yeast characteristic from or fermentation characteristic because we have yeast and bacteria here is medium low my hop or you know bitterness Hop, I would say, uh, hop-derived bitterness is low. I can get a touch of wood, but less wood characteristics than I'm getting from the Duchess de Bourgogne. In some ways, this one is more balanced. The malt, the wood characteristics, the yeast characteristics, even the, the that low malt or hop-derived bitterness are all a little bit more, you know, connected with each other here. Uh, whereas this one has the yeast talking out a little, quite, you know, Quite a bit louder than than the malt but still the malt is kind of like higher overall the intensity on this one overall is higher than the intensity on this one um, and this one just has everything kind of tucked in a little bit more together this one sort of allows things to sort of pop out a little bit more so sometimes the yeast really like sticks out and you get this kind of sharp acetic acid vinegar you know, balsamic vinegar characteristic and then you kind of get this moment of um, oak and a fermentation derived like 
phenol tannin astringency and that kind of pops out for a moment but then kind of like goes away and gets balanced by some of this malt sweetness so everything here is a lot just i think sort of like stick out a bit more you know if i'm thinking about like a spider graph or something um or when i think about flavor sometimes i picture like a like a um like an eq system if you know if you see like when you're listening to music and you and if you have like an active eq you can kind of see like where you get these little peaks i feel like this is allowing all those peaks to kind of stick out a little bit more sharply uh, whereas this one's trying to keep everything kind of a bit more smooth as if it's like um, if you're a music person like using a compressor it sort of like evens everything out and smooths out the tone so it's a bit more rounded whereas this one has a bit more like jagged peaks certain um, sounds become a little bit louder certain flavors become a little bit louder for a quick second and then kind of get balanced out by everything else um, and so that's not, a, that's not a judgment thing. I'll talk about my judgment on this later, but that's happening. So then in terms of um, mouthfeel, so again, this is a yeast forward beer, but it's a lot more balanced, also yeast forward beer, but has a bit more um, dynamic between each of those flavors. Carbonation, high, um, astringency, medium, low, and that's coming from yeast, hops, uh, wood. And finish is off dry for both. Uh, carbonation high on this side too, astringency low. And uh, when we talk about alcohol warmth, a little higher on this side, um, I'm gonna call alcohol warmth here, you know, low and then very low. And then um, if we talk about kind of finish on this one, I think I may have skipped that, is um, you know off dry as well, but a little bit more sweetness in the finish from the Duchess. And then we go to overall impression. You know, um, a beautiful beer that showcases a nice balance between fermentation characteristics that can sometimes express um, a bit more acidity and phenol or like spicy type characteristics that you might not normally be used to, but balance very nicely with, with this nice um, sweet malt body and some really interesting wood-like or wood-derived um, characteristics. A sour beer that showcases, again, some of these uh, balsamic-like uh, yeast-derived characteristics um, with a touch of wood, and a, but a bit more of a candy-like expression, a bit more, I think, approachable. Um, and then, you know, my, my overall take on these is that I actually think I prefer the Duchess de Bourgogne. The first time I had it, I remember feeling a little like jarred and shocked by it, but like, like why would beer taste like vinegar? That should be thrown away kind of thing. Um, but the, the more I go back to this beer, the more I love it. And the more I sit down and intentionally pair it with, with food, you know, sit down with it with a meal or with like a little cheese board, the, the more I, I fall in love with it. It just interacts so well with so many flavors, you know, think about Think about all the times you use balsamic vinegar to like um, to pair with either like a tomato salad or just any kind of salad or you know how it works so well um, in so many places. Um, there's a reason for that. The acidity brings some some dynamic to the dish, and then on top of that, this has some sweetness and everything else. And it's I like that it's a bit more. It's like less compressed in terms of its its sound, in terms of its flavor profile. It it has a little bit more like rustic edginess to it it's a bit more punk this one to me um, i think is a fantastic beer that i would also love to pair with food but uh, it doesn't it, this one to me seems like it's trying to subdue itself when you compare it to something like this like this one still kind of wants to be like a punk rocker in your face and this one like like recently got a haircut but still is punk um so uh that's it on these beers Duchess de Bourgogne, 
Rodenbach Grand Cru. Uh, Rodenbach Grand Cru, by the way, is 6% alcohol. This is 6.2% alcohol, so they're both very similar. Again, making them um, a good point for comparing beers. Uh, that is it for this one. Let me know if uh, you'd like to see comparisons between any other beers or styles. Um, happy to do that. Very much looking forward to it. Like, comment, subscribe, do all that. And if you want to join me on a trip to visit this brewery and taste all these beers and a lot of other Belgian beers, uh, you can go to georgesgeorge.com and check out my uh, beer occasions, which will be starting in 2023 and continuing on from there. Uh, thanks again. See you next time. Bye.